ready? Ready. No pump it? Nah. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Doing a little tinkering on the cornet today. Mostly cleaning type stuff. Um, got into the trunk. Trunk had some odds and ends in it. Got the spare tire. Still got the original jack and wrench and stuff in there. That's pretty cool. Um, this doesn't look right. I don't think that's original. It's like a felt. I think it should be like a houndstooth looking material. So the car was obviously white. Um, my uncle thinks that the Boy Scout Trooper or whatever that got the car painted it blue. He doesn't think it would be blue. Um, not to mention that the paint job's not very good. I just I'm not sure they would have, I don't know, they would have put such a crappy paint job on a car, but maybe. Um, it's an old tire. Polyester. I guess that could be the original spare. I don't know. It's got the original style wheel, which is good. Yeah, that's not good. It looks like there's been some moisture in here. Not what you want on a trunk, especially looking at that jack or that wrench. That's uh, it's been sitting there a while. Ugh, that's a. Uh, she's seen better days. Jack, <laughs> well. We're gonna, what are we gonna find? We're we gonna look at the ground or we're we gonna see a solid trunk? Yeah, let's cross our fingers here. Uh, boop! Surprise! Oh, I see some daylight down there. Oh, there's somebody finger! Uh, how bad is that? Well, that's not. There's a hole here and a hole here. If that's all that we end up finding, I can, well, I can live with that. How's the other side? The tire didn't fall through. So that's a good sign. Oh, this side looks pretty good. Yeah, I think we're all right. I can live with that. We're, and I've kind of looked around the quarter panels and stuff. I see a little bit of. You know that, but that's nothing. Everything seems solid that I found. There might be some bubbling, something here and there, but nothing, nothing to cause concern. Um, floor mats all look good. It's, it's got the rubber police package floor mat. And I did decode the serial number. It said WK or whatever, um, indicating whatever it was. It was indicating the police package. So. Uh, fuel tank looks fine. I ordered a new gasket there so I could drop the tank out and just pressure wash it, blow the lines out and stuff before I try to feed any fuel from it. Don't want to mess with pulling stuff into the into the carburetor. Uh, and here looks pretty good. I mean, it needs a lot of washing, of course, but uh, springs are flattened out, which is I guess what happens over time. But uh, eight and three quarter. Looks so like it's got the big drum brake, so which is good. Discs in the front. Run around up there, which is... Oh, no, I didn't notice the rear sway bar in the back either, which I thought would have come with a police package, but... So here we got... Oh, try to focus. Got some disc brakes up here. Got a sway bar. So oh, we'll start cleaning it up. The passenger door there doesn't... I got it to open, and then I can't get it to latch again, so I need to tinker on that. Um, still haven't looked at the mileage yet. I haven't bothered to try to clean the odometer um, lens off here. I want to try to do that without scratching it, but it might be, it might not matter. I don't know. I'm really tickled. This thing's awesome. I'm so happy they were able to bring this up for me. I'm super appreciative of it. So now I'm going to start on the engine bay. And the uh, looks like a pack rat of syrup, rats of some sort. Um, set up shop here on top of the intake manifold. Um, carburetor looks good. And I was looking through the uh, do what documentation my uncle sent up, and uh, th a lot of this stuff's been gone through. Of course, it's sat for 30 years, but uh, we're going to break out the vacuum and get all this nasty stuff cleaned up, or at least cleaner. All, all right, right. making a little more progress here. I went ahead and took the uh, screens off of the cowl there and got down in there too there's lots of stuff packed into that so i got that vacuumed out got the intake and the engine all vacuumed out and then i blew it off with the compressed air so no more 
rat's nest, which is nice. So we're still plugging away. Looking good so far. Are you excited about the car wash, huh? Are you excited about washing the car? <laughs> huh, are you? Okay, so we're gonna throw some bubbles on this guy and clean her up a little bit, or try to. I thought about using the pressure washer, but uh, my thought is if this paint's not very good, I might end up with less paint. So we're just gonna use the old garden hose and some dish water, dish soap. Um, and we'll scrub her up, see how it goes. So uh, it can't look any worse. I think it'll look quite a bit better when we're done. It's still blue, not a big fan of the powder blue, um, but there's worse colors out there. So we'll, we'll live with it for now. Uh, next step will be getting it in the shop but I want to roll it off the trailer right into the shop, so we're stuck with uh, washing it while it's on the trailer, which is not a big deal, but uh, that's why it's not been unloaded yet. So let's get started. Well, she's all cleaned up, looking pretty sharp now. I'm surprised what a difference it made. Um, this paint's got a little bit of life left on it. The roof's getting pretty bad, but from a distance, I think it looks pretty sharp. Um, so we'll uh, start working on her. We'll pull the plugs, see how all they look. Um, I bought new plug wires I gotta make um, since the other ones were chewed up by mice. Oil filter, oil change, things like that. Um, I think there was a battery cable missing, so we'll we'll start tinkering on it. So I've gone into the block here and scraped off the numbers to verify it's a 383. So we have a 2468130, um, which is a, indicates a 383 block. So got that confirmed. Um, so I'm pulling spark plugs because I want to put a little oil in each cylinder and turn the motor over before I try to start it. Make sure it's all free. So on the the uh, passenger side here it's easier to do that from the bottom I was able to get all the driver's side plug from the top since it's tricky to get at all those spark plug holes I come up with this vacuum line hooked to my little squirt bottle so I just put some oil in there engine oil and just pumped a couple squirts in each cylinder and here are all the spark plugs so when I take them out I keep them all orientated to the cylinders that they come out of and this could be an indicator if you've got problems um, I'm fortunate. It looks like all these are have the exact, almost the exact same looking um, material on them. So, uh, Uncle said he probably put 3,000 miles on this when he had it. So these plugs look damn near brand new, and there is definitely some oil built up on it, which I would expect. So, I think it's just an indicator of a high mileage engine, or you know, I don't, I don't, it probably doesn't have 100,000 miles on it, but it was a police car, so you know that goes so, but i think we're looking good i mean they, they've all got a little um blackness to them but that's you know at least it's all even there's nothing no indicators of a major issue so i'll probably put uh go ahead and put brand new ones in it just so these are i'll keep these other they're, they're, they're i could clean them up and reuse them if i get a bad one or something so um so i've got oil pumped into all the cylinders using my little tube thing and now I'm going to turn the engine over a couple times just to see if it'll even turn over. I guess I, th I think it was free. Um, that way I can get those cylinders coated with some fresh oil before I get to the point of trying to start it. So that mouse too, just to point out as a little tip. Um, before you go to pull your plugs out, get your air compressor and blow out all around the spark plugs, especially on an old engine that's been setting. What can happen is you can take your spark plug out and knock some material into the cylinder. Um, so I try to get that all blown away from the um, cylinder as much as possible before I take the plugs out. So using an inch and a quarter socket, I put that on the crank, and the, the bolt that holds the damper on, and was able to turn the motor over two full rotations. Um, turn freely, so that's awesome. Um, definitely easier to do with the spark plugs out, um, so that'll help the cylinders kind of get coated so when I get around to doing the first start um, we'll have that taken care of. Got all the new spark plugs installed now I'm doing wires. I'm using this auto light 8 millimeter, sorry Excel 8 millimeter wire this 4039 they're universal length so um, that way I can cut them to size and make them feel a little bit better. 
I normally just lay them all out in a straight line. So that way I can tell, you know, length, long, shortest to longest. And then I'm starting on the passenger side, which has all the shorter wires. So I'm using up all the short wires, saving all the longer wires for the passenger side, just so I don't run into a situation where I uh, don't have a long enough wire. Um, biggest trick to doing this is soapy water. I just got an old spray bottle. I put some um, dish soap in there and mixed it up. Uh, you just soak the boot all down good. That way the wire slips in there. You usually got to get a pair of needle nose pliers to reach in to pull the wire all the way through. Um, so that helps. And then you also need a set, a special set of pliers for crimping the ends. It takes this uh, kind of a U looking crimp there. So you size it with that one and then crimp it with that one. It's a little tricky. I usually kind of use the needle noses a little bit to kind of get the uh, connector going in the right direction. Um, but it's, uh, you take your time and uh, it comes out pretty good. So I'll kind of show you how one looks when I get another one done here. So here's one I just did. Again, it ain't pretty, but it'll work. You trim the wire back about that far, <clears throat> and it shows you on each of the new ones, it's got a pre-cut pre thing, so you know how long you need. And then you just bend it back against the wire, and then the wire runs under the back, oops, sorry, the back edge of this connector there, and then the crimps on the other side. So again, you want special pliers for that. Um, it'd be really tough to do them without and you probably wouldn't do it very good and there's probably a lot better pliers out there than these these are kind of kind of fight with these but again that ought to work so we'll keep plugging away here all right got all the new spark plug wires installed um, the distributor didn't come out quite as clean as I'd liked it to but it's okay it looks a little like things are going every which direction but it fits um, so next we'll do the oil change and go from there. Let's see what we got for oil here. Let's see how she looks. I'm gonna guess black, but hopefully not gray or any water. Come on. There we go. Well, that's what I would expect black but not got any content or you know old water and a coolant in there so we'll let her drain and we'll put a new filter and some new oil in it um filled it with uh, this rotella 1540 threw a little stp in there for some extra zinc and using this uh pure oil later f oil filter um this model is a little longer than what you'd normally put on these but there's room so i always like to put on as big a filter as possible so uh, next part is I need to make some battery cables. I don't see a negative on here, so I've got some tools for making those. And then, uh, so I'll get to working on that. Okay, I got all my battery cable making tools out here. So we got a crimper tool. This is just a cheapie off of Amazon, but it works really well. Handle's a little bit short, so you gotta use some muscle on that. Um, got some terminal ends here, got some battery connector so this is one aught to three eighths and then a one aught to five sixteenths for the negative um, I'm using some welding cable which is way overkill but I have it um, it's bigger than one aught so I had to trim down some of the cut off some of the wires so you can see so I can still get enough to fit into the plug um, and then I've got some shrink tube that I'll put over the connector just to help protect things so it looks like on these uh, big blocks the uh, negative cable goes right here in the front where normally I guess the throttle cable would go or the throttle uh, spring bracket but this has air conditioning so it's a little different setup but we're going to mount to that same bolt that goes into the head um, not the intake into the head um, and I also went ahead and got a little bit longer bolt this is the one that come out I found another Mopar bolt that's just a little bit long not that it needs to be Mopar but um, I had one, so I might as well use it. So a little bit longer since it'll be going over the deal there. I don't think that's necessary, but I had it, so I might as well use it. So we'll just shove it in there, make the correct selection on the jaws there, crimp her down. And then this isn't the battery I'm going to run. Um, this is just one I had out of the tractor, but I'm going to go with the bigger battery. That's uh, like I put in the 56, and the negative cable will be here. 
positive or terminals uh, that will be there in it with that battery so i'm gonna, just going to make it so it's plenty a little extra long so uh, uh with that in mind so i'll get those get that made all righty got my new negative cable built so i just swooped it around here kind of goes along with the air conditioning hose so plenty of slack if i need to adjust it for a different battery uh, so i'm going to reuse this connector for now and these wires um, they're shot but if we can just get it started before i change and i'll clear it out of the starter that would be nice but i went and took this all apart and cleaned it up best i could uh, wire brush the the wires are all corroded so we'll see um, we'll see if they, they work at all first. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, the key is off. And I'm just going to barely touch this to this post. I've got the negative on. But I'm going to barely touch this positive to see if there's much of an arc. Um, which could indicate a short and a problem. So we're going to just... No, we're good there. So I'm not getting nothing. So that could be bad wiring or whatever. But um, maybe the car won't burst in the flames immediately. Um, so we're going to do that. So I'll hook that up and then I think I'll just get my little, uh, remote starter deal, which is just a couple of gator clips with a starter button and put it on the solenoid and we'll just see if, the get the motor to turn over. Okay. I got my little homemade switchy do here made up. So it's literally just a starter button, some wires and some gator clips. I've got that hooked to the solenoid. So we're just going to touch it and see if it does anything. Oh. She's going to turn over. So what I'd like to do is crank it over for a little while and build up some oil pressure before we try to start it. So, um, PCB valve broken there. Not that that's going to make any difference, I guess. Uh, so let's crank it over a little bit and see what she does. <laughs> So that's uh that's awesome. That's a great sign. So I'm gonna let it rest for a little bit and then I'm gonna crank on a little bit more. Okay, so I kind of got to think and I hate to just crank on it for a long time because probably as long as it's sat, it's not gonna build the oil pressure anytime soon. Um or I don't know, but so I think what I'll do is I'll take the air cleaner off and pour a little two-stroke gas down the throat and see if we can get it to pop. Um, kind of like using two-stroke gas because it's got some oil in it for lubricants for the since it's been sitting so long. So I think uh, we'll give that a try. Well, although I'm able to crank it over out here um, with the ignition turned on, everything else is dead. So I'm going to have to do a little troubleshooting and see if uh, see what's going on there. Okay, I'm not really sure what I did. I turned on the test light and tested the main lead going to the engine or the body harness and that's hot and then I got in the car and the ignition switch works so um, we'll uh, proceed forward here okay so I got a metal can here we'll just pour a little bit in there and that one and that one maybe a little more I'll give that a try see what it does doesn't do. I've got my fire extinguisher handy, so I've always bought one of those. Well, B. She's a runner. I'll, uh, I guess I'll maybe fill up the carburetor float bowls. And, uh, and we'll see if we can get her to run a little bit longer. On these Carter style carburetors, little vent right here on each side. You can see this looks like an open kind of a rectangle there. So I'll just take a turkey baster here and put a little fuel down in there. Man, I'm sure excited, excited this thing fired up. That's that's freaking awesome. Didn't sound too bad. It didn't run very long, but pretty excited about that.
Okay, I'm gonna get some uh, cleaner and clean the dash bezel a little bit, see if I can see if it has oil pressure or not. So we'll be right back. So I got the dash cleaned off and uh, this has an oil pressure light, not a gauge. And the uh, sender doesn't appear to be working. I'm not getting any signal off of it. So I'm going to pull it out and tinker with it a little bit. And if I can't get anything there to work, see if I have a mechanical gauge I can hook up for short term. Been troubleshooting a while trying to get the oil pressure light to work. And I thought I had it figured out. Um, and I took the sender off and cleaned it and was blowing air into it. And it seemed to be, you know, working correctly according to my DVM, my voltmeter. Um, put it back in, still didn't work. And then found that the power to the dash light fuse wasn't working. So I rigged up a uh, jumper um, to get that power fed and uh, that didn't help the dash light issue. I'm still not, didn't look up, nothing's illuminating when I turn the headlights and stuff on. So I went ahead and abandoned that and I put in a mechanical gauge. So we'll just run that for now and uh, see if that shows some oil pressure. So we're gonna try to fire up again here. <laughs> died when it built oil pressure so just as it was building pressure um, the engine went under load and died so I'm gonna pour a little more fuel into the float bowls and we'll give her another go pounds of oil pressure so I don't know if I believe that or not but at least it has oil pressure so I'm going to shut it back down but it's idling fairly smooth all considering I'm going to check the power steering fluid and other things too I don't know how much water is in there either I want an overheater Yep, still got power steering fluid, so that's good. I'm tickled, this thing. Heck, there's, I'd say there's some hope here. Um, I'm gonna turn my exhaust fan on for a little bit, and uh, maybe I'll just dump some distilled water or something in it for now. I, I don't wanna put too much in there because uh, water pump's bad, but I also don't want it to overheat. Okay, got the exhaust fan on, put a little more fuel in there. Uh, let's run a little bit more. Another thing to note, I don't know if it's the newer 727s or just the older ones, but my 65 Coronet, um, you got to start it in neutral if it's been parked for, for a really long time so the uh, transmission can pump itself back up. So I don't know if that's the case with these newer ones, but I've got it in neutral when I'm starting it just, to, just in case. But I might... Uh, Put in gear here for a second too. Let's move the camera back a little bit, and we'll see if we've got any forward or rear, uh, rearward. I don't know why I can't talk. It'll go forwards and backwards. <laughs> I've got the wheels chalked, but uh, we'll still see what it does here.
Oh, I'm just tickled by that. Listen to that thing purr. And it's still running 60 plus PSI of oil pressure, uh, which is awesome. That's an indicator of a good healthy motor, good cam bearing. So uh, I'm gonna put some more fuel in the in the carb, I think, and just kind of keep running a little bit. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned it, the transmission's going forward and backward. I went through all the gears and um, it's it's got movement, so that is fantastic. I sure can't be any happier at this point the thing purrs like a kitten so that'll be it for now I'm gonna start ordering some parts now that I know she runs we'll uh, give her the what fur and uh, make a list and start working through it and uh, probably pull the fuel tank get a new fuel pump Clean the fuel tank out, blow the lines out, put a new fuel pump on there and filter and all that stuff. Um, new water pump since it was leaking. Uh, this is this is just fantastic. I'm super excited about this. I this <laughs> definitely got some electrical issues, but as I would expect with a car that sat for this long, especially in that temperature. So um, be lots of projects to work on, but the fact that it runs and the transmission's working. Um, I'm, uh, I'm ecstatic about all this, so, uh, this is awesome, so stay tuned if you want to see more, we'll, uh, keep on tinkering on her. Thanks for watching.